tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News. Good afternoon. The news continues here at 1230 on this Friday. Bill Bryant and Barbara Bailey reporting. And the student who piloted a drone that crashed into Commonwealth Stadium during last week's opening game has now been charged with a crime. UK police cited 24-year-old Peyton Wilson with second-degree wanton endangerment. Police say Wilson was operating the drone from outside the stadium when it slammed into the suite level of the stadium just before kickoff. WKYT's Mike Linden has been tracking the situation and he joins us live now with our top story at 12:30. Barbara, a UK police have charged a student for piloting a drone that crashed into the new section of Commonwealth Stadium during last weekend's home opener against Louisiana Lafayette. UK police have charged first year UK law student Peyton Wilson for crashing a drone into the new Commonwealth Stadium last Saturday. The 24, 24 year old from Louisville is charged with second degree wanton endangerment. Wilson faces up to a year in jail and or fines. UK police chief Joe Monroe says the decision to charge Wilson was based on how close the drone came to one of the military parachutists skydiving into the stadium before the game. We're using this um, incident to, to evaluate what uh, preventive measures we can actually increase to, to prevent this from happening again. One of the things that we're going to do is we're actually going to um, put in our parking lots uh, signs that say this is a no uh, drone fly zone. Chief Monroe says Wilson will appear in court October 20th in Lexington. Mike Linden, WKYT. All right, Mike, thank you very much for your report there at Commonwealth. Chief Monroe says that police have forwarded their findings to the Federal Aviation Administration for further review of any additional violations or penalties. Lexington police are searching for a shoplifting suspect who struck an officer with his car while he was making his getaway from the speedway at 7th and North Broadway. Police say an officer chased the man to Dakota Street, where they say his getaway car and driver were waiting. And as they were pulling away, they hit the driver, who, were t who we are told suffered minor injuries and was treated at the scene. Police are hoping witnesses will help with their search. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, police have been searching an area in southeast Fayette County for a suspected bank robber. According to police, about 9.30 this morning, a man came into the Chase Bank on Nicholas Park near Manowar. He implied he had a weapon, demanded cash from the employees who were working there in the bank. Jim Ballard was working at a nearby store during the robbery. He said an elderly man was able to get out of the bank during the robbery. Uh, he said the uh, bank robber told him to get down on the floor and... He just looked at him and took off running out the door. He did as hard as he could go. <laughs> Now, no one was injured in the robbery. Police conducted a full search with a helicopter, a canine unit, and several police uh, on foot in the surrounding area. They called off that large-scale search about an hour later. The suspect is a black male in his 30s. He's 6 feet tall, weighs about 230 pounds, and was last seen wearing a gray shirt and gray and red hat. In just a few minutes, a man accused of killing his mother will face a judge in Lexington. The Fayette County Sheriff's Office brought Jack Clemens back to Kentucky late last night. He's been in jail in Colorado since July. That's where he was arrested after Lexington police found his mother, Shirley Clemens, dead in her home. Police say they traced credit cards to track Clemens to Colorado. His hearing is set for 1 o'clock. Well, certainly a sunny start to this Friday, but Big changes are on the way for the weekend. It's nice right now if we could hold on to it, but it looks like a rain and then cooler temperatures are on the way. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris, he's in our first alert weather center tracking the changes that are coming. Micah? Yeah, we're looking outside and we don't see that rain until you look back toward the west. That's where it's popping up from and it's heading our direction. Remember, this isn't a very powerful system. It is not in terms of rainfall. You'll get some rain. We could get as high as an inch of rain in some locations, uh, depending on if you see some of that rain or some of those thunderstorms rolling over you. But this is more about that cool air that's going to be filtering on in tomorrow and off through the rest of your weekend. 
And you can see that going throughout the rest of the day. Some soggy uh, conditions there for some of these high school football games later on as it looks like the bulk of the rain moves on in during that time. And remember, you can get heavy downpours because we will have some embedded thunderstorms. But tomorrow and off towards your Sunday, I mean, you're talking about fall conditions, feeling like you should be going trick-or-treating sometime soon. That's how cool we're talking about. And not only that, it'll be 10 to maybe even 20 degrees cooler than where we have been the past couple of days. We'll get into your latest forecast. About 10 minutes. Okay, see you then. Thank you. An honor today for a firefighter who died last year during a charity event. The name of Captain Tony Greider was added to a memorial in Campbellsville. WKYT's Phil Pendleton is in Taylor County now where that ceremony took place. Phil? Captain Tony Greider died on September 20th of last year when an ice bucket challenge went terribly wrong on the campus of Campbellsville University. His name is now on a memorial that honors all first responders. The first name on that memorial is Kentucky State Trooper Johnny Edrington, a Campbellsville native who was killed during a traffic stop in Laurel County in 1988. The memorial is made up of four iron pyramids that reach up to the sky. Greider's name is on the one to honor firefighters. Greider's family attended the ceremony and his boys unveiled the memorial. We talk about him all the time and of course the boys have questions and they don't understand a lot of things but but they're taking it really well. I'm really really surprised and happy about it. But uh, really just odd over this. It's just beautiful and didn't expect it. And of course, it's by no mistake, no accident that this is all taking place on 9-11 when first responders and many people all over the United States, their memories are honored today. In Taylor County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. And the entire memorial is named for Trooper Edrington, whose death is a murder case that remains unsolved. Greider died from injuries that he suffered when he was shocked by an arc of electricity while he was in a fire truck bucket that got too close to high voltage power lines. Lexington firefighters and police have placed a wreath in Phoenix Park today to honor first responders killed in the 9 11 attacks. At EKU, the ROTC is also sponsoring a service today, including a moment of silence. And EKU will be holding two memorial stair climbs at Keene Hall on the south end of campus, one at 3 this afternoon, the other at 9 o'clock tonight. Glad you're with us on WKYT. There's a lot more news coming right up for you. Tomorrow is game day, and if you're looking for some tasty tailgating options, we have them, plus some tips on how much food to take along. Also, ghost and goblins are taking over the Lexington Center starting this afternoon. And a couple of them have stopped by our studio. We'll have a sneak peek into Scarefest 8.